Hi guys, me again. I'm so excited because our subscribership has really grown and we've gotten some really wonderful suggestions of topics to cover. This week we're going to cover a topic that I personally love, um, the 1940s. If you think about the 40s in today's perspective, we have a lot of subcultures that really um, love to emulate the 40s. We have the pinup girls, um, icons like Dita Von Teese, and uh, a lot of the designers from pretty much the 80s to today are inspired by silhouettes from that time period. We're going to start with um, an iconic designer from the 40s, Gilbert Adrian, better known as Adrian. He made his name as an incredible costume designer with films like The Women, uh, The Wizard of Oz, Philadelphia Story. And for those of you that are interested in um, learning more, you should really Google and do a little bit of research on Adrian because he is someone that, I mean, to this day, so many of his styles are relevant. This beautiful piece is an Adrian. It's a, a rayon crepe. It's pretty classic for the time period. It has shoulder pads. I would say it's maybe 1942. Um, it's before L85, which was a law that was passed that restricted the extra use of fabric. We can get into that later. Um, but what's wonderful about this is the draping, how this silhouette really amplifies and illustrates the female form. It, it's beautiful. And what's great is uh, he used not just beads, but also leather applique. The gold that you see is actually leather. And even though the leather is over 60 years old, it's still holding up pretty well. Um, one of the strong details from the 1940s is draping and also um, doing pleats and seam work that radiate. And um, we have the great pleasure of our lovely Orchid Satellite, who is going to be wearing another dress that is unlabeled, but we think it's an Adrian. Orchid is a stylist and also a performer. And um, you can see the detailing on this kind of invisible pockets. And if you turn to the back, the bustle back, which just totally floats my boat. It's this uh, gusset that gives it draping and then um, pleats that go on, um, on an angle, not quite a 45 degree angle. The button holes are bound. It's absolute quality in a fabric that most people think of using for tablecloths. You have to think about World War II and how that impacted so much of the world as far as what was available. There was rationing. And Adrian liked to use gingham because it was typical Americana. And um, he used it in a lot of his designs. Now, why is this dress important? Because we have a 1980s Nicole Miller uh, and if you look at the back of this, this piece is absolutely spot on inspired by the 1940s. So the theme this week is 1980s does the 1940s. So this is a great example. So during the 40s, right around 1942, I believe, um, a law was passed called the L85, which restricted the use of fabric. Uh, traditionally, men would buy suits that would have a vest and two pairs of trousers, no longer. Uh, women were restricted in how long their uh, hem could be, and uh, underneath the hem there could only be no more than two inches. Belts were, were restricted with the number of inches that could also be used. Uh, women could only have one pocket. There were exceptions made for like pregnant uh, maternity clothes and things like that, but for the most part, um, fabric needed to be used for a military. And um, things were rationed, and so there was um, scarcity, and you know, that kind of drives um, a hunger for things to go the opposite end of 
the spectrum. So why am I saying this? Because in 1947, Christian Dior like exploded with his new look because he dropped the hems, he used panniers to kind of um, extend the hip area, and a lot of people followed through. We have on the mannequin a haute couture Pierre Balmain from that time period. And you can see, I'm, I love this piece because it's a silk, uh, like a, it's not a silk twill, but it feels like a, a scarf kind of silk. The print on it is divine. The color combination is wonderful. And um, the, I if the proper size mannequin were wearing it, you'd see that it's nipped in the waist and then it kind of splays outward. Uh, you can see the hem has dropped down to probably about mid-calf, depending on how tall you are. For me, it would be down to my ankles. Um, and um, why I love this example is because we have a John Galliano dress, and uh, this is beautiful cotton pique. Uh, it's a dress and a jacket, and in here there is cotton uh, filling to kind of make the hips stand out. But the silhouette is really, really close to this Pierre Balmain. One of the cheap thrills that I have with my pieces is uh, when I do research on it, I actually find the piece being worn either on the runway um, or by someone notable. And uh, this wonderful Galliano piece uh, was uh, worn by Kate Moss. Um, I should also mention that this piece was part of his runway collection that really cemented him as um, a distinguished fashion designer and uh, really gave people the thumbs up that his career was going to be a good one. Um, another really good example of the 40s is this linen, uh, Christian Dior New York, or it's uh, imported by iMagnon, uh, jacket. It has uh, panniers in it, and it has this uh, variation of a theme of a notched collar, very 40s in silhouette, and um, this beautiful kind of swallowtail uh, pleat in the back. This kind of detailing was also done by Adrian, and you'll see designers from the 80s, such as Mugler, Montana, and uh, Ezzedine Alaya, drew inspiration from a lot of those designers. This magical unicorn on the dress form is uh, Terry Mugler. It's a piece that's actually uh, part of the collection in Kyoto. Um, and um, it's tr incredible um, seams because in order to be able to inlay these pieces, it, you have to really be a craftsperson. And you'll see that the contouring of colors carries over to the back as well. Um, unicorn fantasy, totally. And um, I, we also pulled this Mugler suit. You can see the concept of padded shoulders and tailoring to exhibit the waist, there's a fetish quality to a lot of their designs. Um, this one has um, a little bit of a flare in the back, but these guys were rebels in their time. Uh, you have to think back to the Battle of Versailles and how American designers and French designers were really um, creating a look that was completely different than Mugler, Montana, and Alaya. Their fan base was everyone from Iman to Grace Jones, and the popularity of Mugler, there's been a complete resurgence uh, now, today. Uh, people looking for um, Mugler's jackets, primarily in dresses. There is an exhibition currently happening in Montreal at the um, Museum of Fine Arts. When it launched, we were um, honored to loan uh, Violet Tchotchke a gown to wear to the opening. And um, 
it's a place I really wish that I had been there for the opening because you can only imagine what people wore there. So that pretty much covers it for the 80s does 40s but we are going to introduce a new segment at the tail end of every episode and it's a segment we're going to call show offs. It will contain treasures that I may have acquired during the week or pieces that I just can't wait to show you guys. So hold on. This week, I'm showing you the most beautiful bathing suit I've ever had the pleasure to own. It's a Rosemary Reed. It was purchased by a woman from the LA area. She never wore it, thank goodness. <laughs> it's in pristine condition, and it has this um, modesty bra on the inside that is also gold lame. And, um, I, I just, I mean, Rosemary Reed's bathing suits are tens usually, but this is, this is off the charts. So, uh, hope you like it as much as I do. <laughs> so, um, that's it for this week. Thank you so much for your interest and your positive responses, and uh, we look forward to sharing more goodies with you next week.